Look here. Look right here. Let's see if I can. Let's see if I can get him. Let's see if I can get him. Oh man, this snake is so so docile. Oh wait a minute, that's not real. Today we're going to talk about with John McGregor. You all know him. He's a snake guy. We're going to talk about poisonous snakes. How many poor poisonous snakes have died? And this is an actual skin of a rattlesnake. We all know what a rattlesnake looks like for the most part. But still, there are times when people, if they see a poor little old black rat snake and his tail's moving, he's a rattlesnake. Today we want to talk about misidentification. That's a rattlesnake, obviously. You've got under there a copperhead who's getting ready to shed, so he's in a little bit of a bad mood. You can come see these snakes at the Salado Center. At this point, I'm going to back behind the camera and let John talk about a copperhead, its distinctive markings, and how to tell the difference between that and other snakes that people think might look like a copperhead. Now I'm going to lift this up, and I have no idea what's going to happen. I'll be over here, John. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad he's there. <laughs> wow. Notice the, the pattern on his back. He has a kind of dark hourglasses and they don't all match. Here are a couple that are offset. Most of the time there'll be at least some of these hourglass markings that are complete. The body is going to be, it's going to be a heavy body for the length of the snake. Um, it's, the color is two shades of brown. It matches uh, leaf litter on the forest floor. Notice another thing, the tail of the copperhead is completely black. Young copperheads, when they're first born, their tail is is bright greenish yellow and they use it as a lure to attract insects. Hmm. And then when the copperhead's about two years old that color fades to black. You'll see the the elliptical pupil really stands out and another thing that really stands out is right in front of each eye there's a, a pit in the side of the head. Copperheads are pit vipers and they use that pit, it's a heat sensing apparatus, and they can sense a body temperature of a mouse that's several feet away. Copperheads are very common. It's by far the most common venomous snake in Kentucky. And they are all across the state, uh, really common in eastern and southern Kentucky, and out of, in western Kentucky, not common in the bluegrass. Wow. The only exception to that being you know, places like Adair Wildlife Area up in Boone County. I, I have uh, tin laid out to look for these and haven't found one yet. Uh, probably the uh, Veterans Memorial WMA in Scott County. I'd be really surprised for a copperhead to be there. But <clears throat> in other parts of the state outside the bluegrass, they're real common. Now I've been looking for these on uh, Kentucky River WMA in Henry and Owen County, and that's right along the river since 2003 and I still haven't found one. Huh. So I'm sure they're up there, but uh, they should be in really low numbers. If I get really lucky, I can find a place where they are and then I can lay out some tin or some plywood and maybe start getting some population information. I'm glad you do what you do, but I'm glad you're doing it and I'm not. <laughs> yeah, these are great snakes. What are the most common snakes that get their heads chopped off that people send a picture to you and say, John, look at this copperhead, and it happens to be a... Yeah, what? okay. In the bluegrass, milk snakes get mistaken for copperheads, rat snakes, hognose snakes, because hognose is heavy bodied, and it has a pattern on it, and when you walk up on a hognose snake, <coughs> it flattens out its neck and starts hissing. You know, looks, looks poisonous as all get out. A northern water snake, which looks very much like a copperhead, uh, it has the same kind of pattern on it. I mean, the best thing to do anywhere you live in Kentucky is learn what a copperhead looks like <laughs> and just be thinking about that anytime you see a snake. And don't mess with a snake unless you know what it is. Exactly. I guess let's get him back in his, in his comfortable little home and then let's talk about the water moccasin. This is the other guy we're talking about. Now look at that flat head. I'll tell you what I look for on a cottonmouth. Uh, they're, they're kind of dull colored and they do have that massive head mm -hmm. but if you look straight down on the head of a cottonmouth you can't see the eyes. Uh, they have a, a scale that, that uh, overlaps the top of the eye and so when a, cop, a cottonmouth is looking at you it has to like cock its head and look at you this way. Mm -hmm. And all of the water snakes, the harmless water snakes that people think are water moccasins 
you look straight down on them, their eyes are kind of up toward the top of the head. And it's, you know, you can see both eyes looking straight down on them. Boy, I can sure smell him. Well, they give off a musk, don't they? They have a really powerful musk, and it's a, it's a unique scent. Um, now, when, they're, when, the, when a cotton mouth is upset, it usually stands its ground, and a lot of times it'll throw its mouth open. Now, this one's been in captivity a long time, but he's kind of doing it. And that mouth is kind of white on the inside. Mm -hmm. That's where the name cotton mouth comes from. Right. <clears throat> but usually one, one of these snakes in the wild, uh, will it will just coil up and throw that head back and open that mouth wide open and just lay there. Right. And if you walk around him, he will follow you. And he's just trying to defend himself. But to a lot of people, this is pretty intimidating. <laughs> yeah, including myself, and, which is why I'm standing way yeah. back over here. This now, guy's actually a lot better behaved than I thought he would be. You know, another thing these things do is they, they shake that tail. And a lot of times they, they actually wag the tail. Now, what most commonly is mistaken? What, what are people calling? And there's a lot, of, a lot of those water snakes get pretty big and round, don't they? They get pretty, pretty good size. Yeah, we have diamondback water snakes that get up to five feet or so and they're big heavy bodied snakes right but you can always tell at a glance because if you walk toward a water moccasin he drops off the log and gets away and if you walk toward a cotton mouth he opens up his mouth and, <laughs> and stays there and I thought that was kind of words to live by uh -huh. but I don't you I don't ever use the term water moccasin just because it's it doesn't really mean anything and right. if you get into uh, bluegrass or eastern Kentucky or the penny wild where there aren't any cotton mouths and people say water moccasin, they're thinking it's venomous. You know? mm -hmm. Right. The cottonmouth is a rare species in Kentucky, really. We have a few places that have lots of them, you know, like Murphy's Pond out in uh, Hickman County, or like the Clear Creek area in Hopkins County. You know, there's one site in Davis County that we know of, one site in Butler County, one site in Union County. This is just not, not a common snake. Very good. Now, again, these are at the Salado Center in Frankfurt. If you want to get an up close and personal look at these guys behind a very thick glass where <laughs> all your digits are safe, you are more than welcome to come out and do those great things to see at the Salado Center.